So to check the lens on the camera, first thing to do, this is the focusing and that wants to be nice and smooth and when you look through the viewfinder you should be able to see it f focusing and going out of focus on something that you select as you move this. So the little red mark just here, that's, that's focusing on infinity and goes down to, this is like seven feet, six feet, down to five feet or so. The, the macro ability of the camera is the, the minimum distance that it can focus to. Some cameras can focus very close, you know, a matter of a few inches away. Um, or you can, you can put macro rings between the lens and the camera to, to give it that ability. In the viewfinder, there's often what's called a split image viewfinder, whereby as you focus, if you're looking at a, a vertical line somewhere in the picture, when it's in focus, the, the two halves of the split image coincide so that it looks right, otherwise the, the two bits are slightly offset, which means it's, it's out of focus. This ring that I'm moving now, this is the aperture ring on the camera, and this is how you change the aperture setting. So what you see on the ring are the what are called the F numbers, um, and whichever one is next to this little red line is the F number that you've selected. So it's now set on f3.5, if we move that up that's f5.6, f8, f11. And the way these numbers work they're exponential so that the um, if you change it from f11 the next stop f16 that allows half as much light into the camera. So f3.5 the aperture is open the widest. Um, some lenses go, well usually lenses go down to f2.8 and then what are called faster lenses have a f1.8 or 1.4 setting um, and that lets even more light into the camera and those lenses are usually more expensive. If we take the lens off the camera, um, this one with a bayonet fitting usually you press this little button here and then turn the lens and it comes off there are there are three lugs on the lens which fit into three holes on the camera and you you line up that red dot with this red dot and you fit them together and then give it a, a third of a turn and it clicks into place so if we take the lens off so we put it on f3.5 the the aperture is completely open and then as we as we turn the ring you can see the aperture stop right down and it's now on f32. When the lens is on the camera this is what's called the aperture lever. When you're changing the aperture on the camera the aperture is held open by this little lever while you turn the ring and then at the moment the photo is taken the camera releases the aperture to let it stop down to what it's supposed to be. Um, the reason for that is so that when you're focusing and composing through the viewfinder you get the full amount of light through the camera, otherwise you might find it very difficult to see. So from this end the lever holds it open and then shuts it down. If you're checking the lens that needs to happen almost instantaneously. Some lenses this can become sticky and it, if it doesn't happen very quickly, if it, was, if it was slow to shut down, that would be a problem because it wouldn't have shut down by the time the photograph actually gets taken. When you're checking the lens, you also need to be looking for um, mist, dust, scratches and fungus. So it is some lenses you get little patches of mould growing inside which means they'd have to be dismantled to, to get it out, which can be done, but it's a specialist job. Um, you're looking for scratches on the surface of the lens. If the lens has had a, a skylight filter put on it, that should protect the lens. Sometimes older lenses, you can get a few specks of dust inside, and you can see that if you hold it up to the light, you can see, you can see the specks of dust better. A few specks are not really a problem because the it doesn't affect the overall image but if there's a lot of dust in there then it will cause a problem.
you can also get misting in a lens which it can be sort of water vapor but there are other things that can cause a slight sheen to develop on the surface of some lenses which will make the the picture appear uh, sort of misted which is uh, not a good thing some cameras have a, uh, what's called a depth of field preview button and when you press it and when you press it it, it does the same operation that ha what we've just been looking at is a this is a Pentax K bayonet mount uh, which is on a Casina camera K mount lenses can be put onto any camera which has got a K mount fitting let's now have a look at uh, the one of the other main lens standards is the um, M42 thread um, lens as found on this Zenit Zenit EM the the M42 it's originally from sort of 1960s uh, Pentax cameras such as Spotmatics before they all moved to the sort of Pentax and Nikon and Minolta uh, bayonet mounts. This one they unscrew like a nut. So it's basically um, a threaded nut and bolt arrangement. These operate in a slightly different way. They, they usually have um, an A for auto and um, M for manual setting. When they're on the manual setting, when you when you turn the aperture ring, if we put this onto the auto setting, it works much the same as the K mount lens, in that as we turn the aperture ring here, this goes from f1.8 to f16 as we turn the aperture ring the aperture doesn't actually doesn't actually stop down until you take the photo when this little pin here is pressed by a, a bar in the camera and that shuts down the aperture at the moment that you take the photo or again they often have a depth of field preview button which will press the lever in the same way so that you can see what it's going to look like. If we put it onto the manual setting then what happens is that the, the aperture shuts down as you turn the aperture ring regardless of anything else so it will shut down and stay shut down. So if, if we look at the camera if we cock this and it is on the B setting so that bar is moving and we'll press the aperture pin on the lens and when we take the shot the mirror flips up out of the way and that bar is forward and then when we let it go they both go back to their original positions the lens just screws back on until it's tight so you just have to catch the thread and turn it not quite as positive as a bayonet mount and so on so as you can see on the manual setting that wouldn't happen on a, um, a K mount SLR the aperture is going to in and out and on the auto setting the aperture doesn't change as you move the ring until you press the shutter release button. Again that needs to happen almost instantaneously so that it's ready for when the photo is taken. Most Russian and East European cameras again most Russian and East European SLRs such as Zenits and Practicas have these M42 screw-on lenses a lot of them are very good quality, uh, such as Carl Zeiss and these Pentacon lenses. And what you can get are adapters which let you put these 70s and 80s lenses onto modern cameras. So this is um, an adapter which you screw the M42 lens into this adapter and it gives you a, a bayonet fitting which you can then, there's the red dot, you can then 
put it onto a, a Pentax mount and you can also get adapters to, to put them onto modern digital cameras which gives you some interesting options.